Contender Regime Boxing, checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? So I wanted to touch on this topic, man. Uh, Josh Taylor uh, coming off of a very, very close, uh, very competitive and quite controversial victory versus Jack Catterall, you know, two UK guys, Jack Catterall being from England and Josh Taylor being from Scotland. It was actually in Josh Taylor's hometown, you know, and, uh, you know, the fight was way more competitive than I thought it was going to be. It was more competitive than 99% of everybody thought it was going to be. Uh, Jack Catterall was an undefeated guy. Uh, of course, Josh Taylor was undefeated. And, uh, you know, it was, you know, he was a very, uh, Catterall was a very experienced guy, had been doing this thing over there in the UK for a long time and, you know, finally got an opportunity to get up there and shine, man. And he did just that. He showed a great account of himself, put up a, a really good performance, man, and showed a lot of skill, savvy, and technique in that ring. And I was pleased with how he performed. It wasn't Josh Taylor's best performance, um, you know, but I thought he did enough to at least get the draw. Uh, the fight was very, very close. I, you know, a lot of people screaming robbery. Me personally, I don't think it was a robbery. I think people getting carried away just because the underdog, you know, everybody gets so enamored with the with the idea of the underdog. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that if you if you had Jack Catterall winning, I'm cool with that. I won't I will not argue. Uh, if you had Josh Taylor winning, I'm cool with that. I will not argue. If you had it a draw, I'm cool with that. I will not argue. But what I will argue is that there was no robbery, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you want to see a robbery, go watch Sweet Pea versus Chavez Senior. That's a robbery. Sweet Pea clearly outboxed Chavez. It wasn't even close. That's a robbery. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at the Josh Taylor and um, and Catterall fight, I mean, it just depends on what you're looking at. Uh, I thought Catterall was too conservative. You know what I mean? He was extremely conservative. You know, he would he was doing this thing. He would throw flurries here and there. But for the most part, he was just sitting and waiting on Josh Taylor and, and catching him come in with that with that straight left. He was doing a good job of that. But uh, for, for the most of the rounds, Josh Taylor was uh, uh, controlling the pace of the fight. And he was actually bringing the fight to Catterall. And although Taylor wasn't landing a whole lot of clean stuff on the chin, he was landing. He was hitting Catterall arms, his shoulders. He was hitting him in the ribs. He was hitting him on top of the head. He was hitting him with he was throwing everything. You know, I thought Josh Taylor was actually too aggressive and too overzealous. Maybe it was due to Catterall grabbing his throat at the weigh-in, getting it, getting up under his skin, getting in his head. Maybe it was due to Josh Taylor being in his hometown, which also adds a lot of pressure. You know, for some reason, when guys fight at home, they either fold up and get gunshot or they just they go out there and be too aggressive and fuck around and either get knocked out or they just look sloppy and look bad. That's what happened with Josh Taylor. He went out there, man, and was, you know, just coming forward, 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 not even really, not using a jab, not really setting things up. He was just too eager. And I thought that's why his performance looked very, very off and muddy. However, I will say this. You see the title of this video. Uh, with that being said, you know, what I didn't like with Josh Taylor in that fight is his inability to make adjustments. And I don't know... I want to give Josh Taylor the benefit of the doubt because, you know, he showed me uh, great skill in the Jose Ramirez fight. He showed me great skill in the Regis Progress fight. I thought the fight with him and Regis Progress could have went either way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I thought if they would have gave that fight to Regis Progress, I would have been cool. If they would have said it was a draw, I would have been cool. You know what I mean? It was even some people talking about robbery in that fight. I'm like, bro, do you... Dog, just because a fight is close and the person that you thought won didn't get the victory, bro, that don't mean it's a robbery, bro. Like, that, it's a close fight, you know what I mean? It just depends on what motherfuckers, what you value in judging a fight, you know what I mean? However, you know, uh, you know, he showed me 
the ability to really put things together, man, and, you know, be sharp and be, you know, use his jab, show good hand speed, good power, good combination punches, and then also uh, toughness, which he showed at the end of that Jack Catterall fight in the championship rounds when Jack Catterall was being extremely conservative. Um, you know, Josh Taylor was pressing the action. He was out there trying to get some. You know what I'm saying? He was out there trying to go crazy. You dig what I'm saying? So uh, that's the type of heart and toughness that I respect out of Josh Taylor, you know. But I saw some things that really didn't sit well with me. I, I thought that um, he he lacked the ability to adjust to what Catterall was doing. You know what I'm saying? Again, like I say, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't know if maybe they did a rematch. He would kind of step back and fight a little bit less emotionally and fight from a more, you know, cerebral standpoint and be more patient and pick his shots like he normally do, kind of like he did versus Jose Ramirez, you know, because Jose Ramirez, he got them bombs. You dig what I'm saying? Got power, got really good skill, man, is a, a really good inside fighter, go to the body well. And I saw Josh Taylor make adjustments in that fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, but it was something that Catterall was doing that was, you know, was keeping Josh Taylor honest and kind of keeping them um, guessing and keeping them off balance a little bit, you know, and that worries me for Josh Taylor going to the next level because he, he, although he's fought some really good competition at 140, I don't think he's seen anything like the, the top guys at 147. Um, the top five guys and I'll run them off and, you know, every, I, you know, people going to have their own opinion on who they think is top five. But I'm going to run it off like this. I'm going to say Errol Spence, number one, of course. Uh, Terrence Crawford, number two. Uh, Jordanis Ugas, number three. Uh, 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 Jerron Boos Ennis, number four. And number five, I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you a 5A and a 5B. I'm going to give you Virgil Ortiz, and I'm going to give you Keith Thurman. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I don't think Josh Taylor beats any of those guys at 147, simply because, um, you know, he's a bigger guy at 140. I think that helps him out a lot out. You know, uh, of course, the skill that he has uh, plays a huge factor, but I think his size at 140, you know, really helps him. He's rangy. He's long. Uh, you know, he, he's uh, physically strong in the ring with these guys. When he goes to 147, all of those phys physical advantages and attributes is really going to go out the window. Of course, he's going to be stronger himself, but this is going to be really nothing to a natural 147 pounder like an Earl Spence like a, a Terrence Crawford. You know, you could say Terrence Crawford is a smaller guy moving up in weight, but Terrence Crawford is a grown-ass man. And that motherfucker been at 147 long enough. Like he said a few months ago after the Sean Porter fight, y'all motherfuckers done let me go into the division. It's over with now. Terrence Crawford is a grown-ass man. He a natural 147-pounder. I don't care where you came up from. Terrence Crawford is a solid, full-fledged welterweight. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, he bigger than Keith Thurman. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Keith Thurman been at 147 his whole career. Terrence Crawford bigger than Keith Thurman. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, Keith Thurman, again, you know, Jerron Boots Ennis, uh, Virgil Ortiz. These are big guys, man. That size shit ain't going to really give you no type of advantage in a fight with these guys. And I think skillfully, um, all of these dudes bring something to the table that will be extremely difficult for Josh Taylor to overcome. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I just, I just think it's going to be it, it's going to be a very, very tough task uh, for Josh Taylor to to beat any of those guys. And, um, you know, I don't know if if he should stay at 140. You know what I mean? Now, I told you in when I did the post fight reaction, it's smoke at 142. But he might fare better just staying at 140, man, defending those titles you know, even though he's only 18, 19 and no, he's still, you know, he, you know, he's what, 30, what, 29, 30, 31. He up there. You dig what I'm saying? You know, I'm not saying don't go be great. Hey, I'm, I'm hoping Josh Taylor proved me wrong. I would love to see Josh Taylor prove me wrong. Go to 147 and kick some ass. I would love to see that, but I just don't see it. I think he gets beat by anybody in the top five. And, um, you know, I think he should go in and rematch Jack Catterall, man. Put that shit to rest. You know, see how you look in that fight. And if he if he go out there and he can dominate Jack Catterall, you know, then go to 147. And I might feel a little bit better about it, you know. And I don't like judging guys just saw one fight. But sometimes 
you can see certain things that that can spell long term trouble, even in one fight. Sometimes all it takes is one fight. You can see something that can spell long term trouble, especially when you're talking about moving up to a division where there's even more competition uh, than where you currently are. You know what I'm saying? So y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. You know, how do y'all think Josh Taylor fares at 147? You know, I think he goes up there, man, and he struggles. I think he struggles with the likes of even Connor Ben. I think he struggles with the likes of an Imante Stanionis. Even though we ain't seen much of Stanionis, you know, Stanionis, is, he's, he's used to fighting these big dudes, man. You know, and we'll see how Stanionis look on the undercard of Spence Ugas uh, versus Butaev. That's going to be a big fight for him, a huge fight. You know, he looked real good in the... Um, uh, uh, what was that? The the Luis, uh, what's my man name? Y'all know the guy that that hit Keith Thurman, hurt him to the body. I forget his name. Luis Colazzo. You know what I'm saying? He looked real good in that fight. You know that fight was stopped early and shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. I think I think he he's a very skilled guy. Uh, got him on a pound for pound list. I think he can. I'm gonna have to adjust that for sure based off that performance, but. You know, uh, I still think he's a, one of the top fighters in the sport. However, man, at 147, I really don't see him having too much success. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. Should Josh Taylor move up to 147? Do you think he can compete with those guys? Should he stay at 147, rematch Jack Catterall, or take on somebody else? Y'all let me know, man. Contender regime boxing. I'll holler at y'all, boys, man.